In this installment, we're going to be breaking down the Sunday night showdown football slate on DraftKings between the Tennessee Titans and the Kansas City Chiefs. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Chef D, and I'm here to bring you the winning ingredients for your Sunday night football matchup between the Tennessee Titans and the Kansas City Chiefs. But before I deep dive into this great, great matchup, I'm lying. It's not a great matchup. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MessageSD. Don't forget about that TikTok at Chef underscore D91. And don't forget about the Patreon if you want more DFS, betting, and fantasy football advice. All of those links will be provided down below. The first thing we're going to attack will be this injury report before we go into the captains and the flex plays. So we're looking at the Tennessee Titans here. Monty Hooker is going to be out. Torrey Carter is going to be out fullback. We're waiting on news about Jeffrey Simmons. Uh, did not practice all week long with an ankle. Um, but the key news for the Tennessee Titans side, the only real factor in what should be a blowout where we have the Kansas City Chiefs coming off a bye. And we already know Andy Reid's record after a buy it is absolutely pristine and we have ryan Tannehill. ryan Tannehill is currently questionable with an ankle injury was able to get in two limited practices so i would say he's leaning towards playing in this game this gives the tennessee titans the best shot to compete in this football game malik willis yes all the upside in the world but he is not ready uh, to go up against the Kansas City Chiefs. Let's just be serious. This is a well-octane offense. And you got Andy Reid coming off a bye. He's been waiting. He's been drawing up plays in his dreams for this game uh, against the Tennessee Titans. Let's look at the Kansas City Chiefs side. On the injury, uh, injury report, everyone is pretty much clean and clear. We got no big problems here for the Kansas City Chiefs side. They're coming in healthy. Obviously, they had the bye. They got Kadarius Tony now. Things are going to be turning around for the Kansas City Chiefs. It's going to be very, very explosive and very uh, highly anticipating to see. Uh, let's get into the captain plays next. Starting off with the captain position, who should we go with first? Who should we talk about first? That's going to be Patrick Mahomes. Obviously, Patrick Mahomes is uh, looking like his also like he's not missing a beat here. All right, he's not missing Tyreek Hill. They, I think, they've gotten more dangerous of what they the route that they took with their wide receiver group alongside of Travis Kelsey. Patrick Mahomes is looking absolutely stunning. Coming off a bye now, going up against the Tennessee Titans defense. Fantasy points allowed to this to the quarterback position from this uh, Tennessee Titans defense. As you can see, it's 23rd overall, 21st in the red zone, all right? They're allowing 274 passing yards and two TDs a game, all right? We can only imagine what Patrick Mahomes is going to do to this defense. I love Patrick Mahomes. He's an absolute lock in any type of, of, of lineup that you make. It doesn't matter if it's flex or captain. As long as you have him in there, all right? You're going to make some lineups with him as flex. You're going to make some lineups with him as captain. He has huge upside in this game at home going up against the Tennessee Titans. who are going to struggle against the wide receiver position, all right? So I love Patrick Mahomes. Derrick Henry. I think we can, he's going to get some usage. I don't think, he might be scripted out of the game. If things get very ugly in this Titans versus Chiefs game, we can clearly see Derrick Henry get scripted out of the game and they're going to go to Dontrell Hilliard. So we want to temper expectations on Derrick Henry in this particular matchup. Um, I think that I want to stay away from him definitely from that captain position. If I'm using him, it's going to be in the flex spot. I want to utilize my captain on Chiefs, just to be honest. It could be defense. It could be Travis Kelsey. It could be Patrick Mahomes. It could be Isaiah Pacheco, for God knows. It could be Juju Smith-Schuster. But me relying on Derrick Henry, that means I'm relying on a game script where Tennessee Titans are going to be... Uh, keep this game close, tight, maybe have a possibility to have a chance to win in the fourth quarter. I don't see that. I do not see that in this particular matchup. Yes, can Derrick Henry get a touchdown? Uh, of course he could. Then we run the risk of him getting a mediocre game like he did at the beginning of the season, where, he, where they were going up against tough competition. The Giants, Buffalo, what do we get from Derrick Henry? 8.5 and 8.2. 
let's look at this Tennessee Titans schedule here. Okay, they face the Giants and they face the Bills. Two good teams. All right. After that, they went on a streak of five easy, easy, easy games. The Raiders are struggling. Colts switched their quarterbacks. Commanders, they're going with Taylor Heineke. Colts again in the Houston Texans. So things are going to totally turn around. There's no more cupcake season for Derrick Henry. So I think we're going to temper expectations on him as a captain play. But definitely put him as a flex if you're going to utilize him at all, if, if, if you want to. All right. Next guy we're going to talk about is going to be Travis Kelsey. This man is just a, an elite top tier, uh, clear cut number one tight end. The only real consistent tight end that you got in fantasy football drafts that's actually worth his price. So everyone else, we got Kyle Pitts. Mark Andrews has been solid, but he's been injured as of late. There's been a lot of inconsistency from the tight end performance, from the tight end group as a whole. Travis Kelsey is someone that we can trust, and we can definitely go towards him in this game going up against the Tennessee Titans, all right? Ryan Tannehill, if we want to use him, um, I would throw him as a, as a flex play, not utilizing him as a captain Malik Willis, Malik Willis we'll, we'll find out and see who's going to be the number one quarterback definitely pay attention to the injury report right before kickoff all right we're going to find out if it's going to be Tannehill which gives them a better chance or Malik Willis all right Juju Smith-Schuster has finally seen some progression in his receiving stacks we got two back-to-back -back games with a touchdown, two back-to-back -back games with over 100 yards receiving as well right before the bye. Juju Smith-Schuster looks awesome. And now they have newly acquired Kadarius Tony, all right? So I wouldn't be afraid of Juju, obviously, because Juju is still that number one wide receiver right now in this offense. Kadarius Tony is going to get a little bit of a sprinkle um, of, of snaps. He's not going to get the full allotment yet. He's not fully acclimated to the Andy Reid offense, but it's going to come very, very soon. So Juju Smith-Schuster is still in our good graces as a captain play. All right. Clyde Edwards-Alaire is someone I have to mention, but you can stay away from in that captain position. They already came out and said that the number one running back in this offense is Isaiah Pacheco. So um, you got a three back committee here. So it's going to be uh, flipping coins if you want to figure out Clyde Edwards-Alaire, Jarek McKinnon, and Isaiah Pacheco. If I'm choosing one out of the three, I would lean more towards Isaiah Pacheco. I see the explosiveness um, in him. Obviously, Clyde Edwards-Alaire has had a great year in the touchdown department, all right? I've uh, struggled, um, obviously, in year two with injury. He's coming back and he's getting a little bit better, but they don't trust him there's a reason why they're leaning on mckinnon and leaning on isaiah pacheco because Clyde was lair is not a good running back let's just be 100 percent honest no burst he's a plotter it, there's a lot of question marks on there that's why he's getting uh he's about he got usurped by a seventh round pick in isaiah pacheco so Clyde was lair he he's a flex play so we'll put him to the side uh, Robert Woods is one guy we can go towards in the Tennessee Titans offense. At least if Ryan Tannehill is going to play, he will target the number one wide receiver in his offense, and that's going to be Robert Woods. I have no problem going with him as well. Oh, look, Kadarius Tony is priced up here. He's going to be become more of a flex play. We'll get to him just a little bit later. All right. So those are going to be the captains we're going to focus on in this matchup. Let's get over to the flex plays. Now, we have the flex plays here, flex ops as I like to call it. And I want to talk about these tight ends. So if Tennessee is going to create some havoc, they're going to have to attack the Kansas City Chiefs with their tight ends. And they have plenty and plenty of tight ends on this Tennessee tight end side. If we're looking at fantasy points allowed to that tight end position, Kansas City Chiefs are bottom six in the league. Well, bottom eight, well, bottom 10 in the league, excuse me, 24th overall, 28th in the red zone, all right? So that's going to be the good spot, the juicy spot for the Tennessee Titans. The only thing about that is they have like four tight ends, all right? They're going to run big jumbo sets, okay? Tight end right here, possession. They got Jeff Swain, who's getting 67% of the snaps, as you can see right here. And we get Austin Hooper. He's more receiving tight end right there, 47%. And then Unkonku, the rookie who I've been talking about, um, in past videos, he is a very explosive, athletic tight end mold, and he's getting 41%. All right, so Jess Wayne does get some 
um, receptions and some targets, uh, but he's mainly a blocking tight end. Uh, the, uh, the the receiving tight ends on this offense will be Austin Hooper and will be Chig Unkonku. So Unkonku here at two hundred dollars, he becomes a really a really just a blast player. You've paid up at majority of your spots. You don't have much money left, but he has some upside. All right, the, you can. There's a myriad of ways that he can get as the third tight end just a touchdown you also all you need for someone that you're paying two hundred dollars in salary um he already has a touchdown this season he had a great game against the colts three for 38 for a touchdown if he has that type of game and you paid up for him and you hit on patrick mahomes kelsey um juju smith schuster and isaiah pacheco or Chiefs defense, then yeah, you are looking really good in the money. So he's going to be one guy to look at, but the more consistent of the tight ends will be Austin Hooper here at 1,800 yet to get a touchdown yet this season, but he is getting some targets. One, he's getting one, three, one, two, um, so far in his game long. All right. If we're looking at Jeff Swain, uh, is not much better as well. Like I said, he's more of the blocking tight end. He's going to get more of the snaps or more of the opportunity to get a catch. That's why you would go with him. But I would stay away from him and I would stick towards Austin Hooper and Chicken Conquer. If I'm looking at a tight end on this team, one of these two guys here will have a great day going up against the Kansas City Chiefs. All right. Um, Robert Woods already spoke about Kadarius Tony is going to be a risky, risky flex play. It's going to be one of your bottom tier options because you do not know how much playing time he's going to get. He is now fully healthy and newly acquired. Obviously, they just put a third round pick on him and a sixth round pick. Um, they're going to utilize him, right? They're going to work him in. This is going to be his first game. For most likely, the next week, he's really going to get turned up to another level. So definitely got to watch Kadarius Tony and see how he plays for next week. So some of the other guys we're going to look at. When is Marquez Valdez Scantling game is going to happen? All right. This guy is a big playmaker. He showed up in San Francisco, 17 fantasy points, but he's yet to get a touchdown. I would be happy to see him get in the end zone. And it could happen this week against Tennessee Titans, where this game we see uh, that it's possibility of a blowout. They could run it up. Mar he can spread the ball to anyone in this offense. I want to see MBS shine. Uh, finally get in the end zone. We're going to go with him as one of the flex plays that we can key in on for this in particular slate. Now, a guy that's going to be affected with Kadarius Tony getting more snaps is going to be Miko Hardman. He's technically going to take his role. Miko Hardman was pretty much explosive in that San Francisco game. Got a touchdown um, receiving and got two rushing touchdowns as well. Had an absolutely a huge day. All right. Now, Who's more explosive? That's going to be Kadarius Tony. He's got great uh, run out to catch, a little bit better of a runner, uh, a route runner. And they thought he was going to take over for Tyreek Hill. That's why they drafted him the year after they got Tyreek Hill. So Miko Harmon is going to be on the back burner. I'm going to put um, Marquez Valdez scaling over Miko Harmon. And we're going to go Juju as our number one wide receiver choice for the wide receiver position for the Kansas City Chiefs. All right. For the defense, I love Kansas City Chiefs defense in this game. Ryan Tannehill plays. They can create some turnovers, create some havoc because they're going to be forced in situations that they're going to have to keep up pace with the Kansas City Chiefs. And if Malik Willis plays, that's even better. All right. I hope Malik Willis plays. This Chiefs defense is going to get sacks, interceptions. They might get a safety. It's going to be a free for all for the Kansas City Chiefs defense if Malik Willis plays. I hope he does. Uh, but if not, if it's Ryan Tannehill, it's still a very good situation for the home team in the Kansas City Chiefs. Let's see if we can find some other guys. We're staying away from the Titans defense. I do not like them in this game. Um, and can we go with kickers? Uh, we can go with Harrison Bucker. Obviously, he's healthy, back and healthy. He's going to average around 8 to 10 points. Um, I expect this team to run up the score, but they're going to be in a lot of opportunities in that red zone. That gives their cooker a lot of opportunities to get you points. All right, so I like Harrison Bucker. If you want to go Reggie Bullock, uh, it's technically, if we're looking at the stats, it's a good matchup for kickers. Um Tennessee going to concede uh, field goals when they need touchdowns. That's going to be the question mark uh, for that. But I, I feel comfortable with Bucker. Reggie Bullock is more of a question mark. And if we're looking for a number two wide receiver, that's going to be Westbrook Akine in this offense. 
Um, been used sparingly. Let's just be honest with that. This Titans team does not throw the ball at a very high clip at all, but they're going to be forced to. All right, so Westbrook Akine is going to be an option. A sleeper for the Tennessee Titans. I did speak about it before, and that's going to be Dontrell Hilliard. He's back and healthy. This is their pass catching back. All right, similar to what we saw in some games in week eight, he got 10 fantasy points. In week five, he got 12. In week one, in a tough matchup against the Giants, they they went away from Derrick Henry and went to Dontrell Hilliard. He got 21 fantasy points. This is going to be one of my favorite uh, flex plays on this slate. Dontrell Hilliard is going to be very, very key in this game. All right. So I like him if they're going to go away from Derrick Henry. Um, and then one of the bottom plays down here, do not forget about Isaiah Pacheco. I told you they have a trio and they did come out and say that he's going to be the number one running back. We saw more touches from him. We saw explosiveness against San Francisco 49ers, eight for 43. Um, the question mark, who's going to be on the field in that Renzo? Hopefully uh, it's Isaiah Pacheco. Um, they like what they see out of him. He was a budding star coming out in preseason. And now he's finally taking the reins over in this running back uh, trio that they have right now. So I love Isaiah Pacheco as a flex play to pair with the Chiefs defense. Get creative that way in your lineup builds. If we're looking past that, uh, we like I, I talked about Hooper already. Uh, Sky Moore is $400. I think now with Kadarius Tony, he's pretty much null and void so these are the guys that we're going to go the cheapest i would go would be uh chicken conquer because he will be get uh he will get some snaps um in this offense and he has some upside plus the weakness to the kansas city chiefs is that tight end position so the cheapest i would go which would be chick Unconquer. all right let's go to the main focuses and all of our lineups that we're going to go to will be patrick mahomes number one i want travis kelsey number two if i had to choose a tennessee titan is going to be dontrell hilliard number three and i think this is a, a good spot for the chiefs defense all right so chiefs defense at home uh, Patrick Mahomes in a great matchup. Obviously, we want to pair Patrick Mahomes with his number one wide receiver, and that is Travis Kelsey. These are going to be the four guys we're going to focus in on for your Saturday, for your Sunday night football showdown slate. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you're following me on Instagram and Twitter at MetsNetsJetsD. I'll be back with another video very soon. All right. Peace out, guys.